Hello. In this video, we are going to derive an expression for the Langmuir isotherm. The Langmuir isotherm is used to describe the absorption of gas molecules onto a surface, which is often a metal. Implicit in the Langmuir isotherm are a number of assumptions. The first assumption is monolayer adsorption, which this means is we can either have the solid surface with no gas molecules or exactly one gas molecule at a particular site. What we cannot have in this model is gas molecules piled one atop each other. The second assumption is that there are no adsorbate-adsorbate interactions. This means once the gas molecules have stuck to the surface, they have no effect on any neighboring gas molecules that happen to be stuck to the surface. And they also do not affect any incoming gas molecules. On our solid surface, we assume that there are M, as in this blue letter here, uh, possible sites where a gas may adsorb. We also assume that there are a total of N, in orange here, gas molecules adsorbed to the surface. This capital Q is the partition function for all of the gas molecules that are adsorbed on the surface. The small Q is the partition function for a single gas molecule. Because the gas molecules are indistinguishable from each other, we have small q to the capital N power. So this is how we get the uh, partition function. This expression m over n, we read as m choose n. And this is the number of possible ways of adsorbing n molecules at m possible sites. Next, we write out this expression literally as m factorial over m minus n factorial times n factorial. And this gives us our whole value for capital Q, the partition function for the adsorbed gas molecules. Next, we relate the Helmholtz free energy A and the partition function Q using the identity that A is equal to minus kt times the natural log of q. Now we substitute our expression for q into our expression for a and make some use of the properties of the natural log since we're taking the natural log of this expression. So that gives us minus kt n times the natural log of q plus the natural log of m factorial minus the natural log of m minus n factorial minus the natural log of n factorial. The chemical potential of the adsorbed molecules, our mu adsorbed, is equal to the partial derivative of the Helmholtz free energy with respect to n, the number of adsorbed molecules, while keeping the temperature and the number of uh, bonding sites constant. Now, if we substitute our expression for the Helmholtz energy here, to remind us that this is the Helmholtz energy, and we know that the chemical potential of the absorbed molecules is this particular partial derivative, now we can write this out explicitly. We're pulling the minus kT factor out in front, and now we're taking the derivative of the rest of our expression for the Helmholtz energy A. Our first term to differentiate is n times the natural log of q absorbed. Well, q absorbed is not a function of n, so this acts like a constant, so if we take the derivative with respect to n, we simply get the constant, the natural log of q absorbed. Next, we take the derivative of the natural log of m factorial. But we recall in the definition for the um, chemical potential of the absorbed molecules, 
that the number of sites m is constant. So if we take the derivative of a constant, the value is 0. Next, we make use of Stirling's approximation for each of these two expressions here that involve the natural log of an expression factorial. One feature to keep in mind here is that when we apply Stirling's approximation and then take the derivative with respect to n, since we have this minus n here, we're going to get a change of sign from the minus sign to a plus when we write out our next expression. So this gives us a positive natural log of m minus n minus the natural log of n. Notice that using Stirling's approximation allowed us to advance, since we're taking the derivative, to get rid of the factorials from our expression. Applying a property of logarithms, we are able to uh, simplify the natural log of m minus n minus the natural log of n as natural log of the quantity m minus n divided by n. Next, we are going to distribute this minus 1, multiplying the kt, throughout this particular expression in the brackets. So it converts the natural log of q absorbed into minus natural log of q absorbed. Then we're going to use, for the second term here, we're going to use a property of a logarithm that if you multiply the logarithm by minus 1, it has the effect of uh, flipping the fraction inside. Now that we have derived an expression for the chemical potential of the adsorbed gas molecules, we recall the expression for the chemical potential of free gas molecules. So mu gas is equal to mu gas naught. This is the chemical potential of the free gas molecules under standard conditions plus kT times the natural log of P. Note that if our pressure P is equal to 1, then this expression after the plus sign becomes 0, and then the chemical potential is simply the chemical potential under standard conditions, which is the definition of standard conditions. Next, we recall that one test we have of equilibrium is that the chemical potentials of the various states are equal to each other. So here specifically, the chemical potential of the free gas molecules will be equal to the chemical potential of the gas molecules that are adsorbed onto the surface. Setting the two expressions equal, we get that the chemical potential of the gas under standard conditions plus kT times the natural log of the pressure P is equal to kT times the quantity minus the natural log of the partition function Q of the adsorbed molecules plus the natural log of the quantity N divided by M minus N. We can divide each side by kT, and now we get that mu naught of the gas divided by kT plus the natural log of P is equal to minus the natural log of Q adsorption plus the natural log of the quantity N divided by M minus N. We can use the properties of logarithms to combine the two terms on the right-hand side of the equal sign to now give us the natural log of N divided by M minus N times Q adsorbed. We notice that two of the three terms in our equation involve the natural logarithm. If we could somehow convert this into an expression involving the natural logarithms, then I would get an equation entirely in natural logarithms, which I could drop out at that point. Next, we use the property of logarithms that the natural log of each of the x is simply x. And here we use this idea in reverse that this expression here is simply equal to the natural log of e with this raised as a power. We can simplify the left-hand side by using the property of logarithms that the log of a plus the log of b is equal to the log of a times b. So that allows us to bring the pressure together with the e expression on the left-hand side. 
Now we notice that we have natural logs on each side. So if the natural log of A is equal to the natural log of B, then A must be equal to B. Next, I'm going to multiply each side by Q adsorb. Once we multiply through, we get that P times Q adsorbed is equal to E to the mu naught gas divided by KT power equals N divided by M minus N. This large quantity of terms on the left hand side, everything after the pressure P, suggests that we make a substitution and assign a new variable B, which is equal to Q adsorbed times E to the mu naught of the gas divided by kt. A thing to keep in mind later is that this uh, new term b is a function of the temperature t. We have been able to simplify things sufficiently to the point now that we have p times b is equal to n divided by m minus n. For our next step, we are going to take the reciprocals of each side. This now gives us that 1 divided by Pb is equal to the quantity m minus n divided by n. We can simplify this expression as simply m over n minus n over n, which is equal to 1. So to get 1 over Pb is equal to m over n minus 1. We introduce a new variable theta, which we define as n divided by m. If we recall that the number of gas molecules adsorbed is equal to n, and the number of available sites is m, then n divided by m, this ratio, is the fraction of available sites that are filled. Also notice that theta is n over m, and we have m over n, it's reciprocal, in our expression so far. This now gives us 1 over pb equals 1 over theta minus 1. Our next step is to add 1 to each side. So that gives us 1 plus 1 over Pb is equal to 1 over theta. Now we're going to use a trick to rewrite 1 as simply Pb divided by Pb. So this gives Pb over Pb plus 1 over Pb is equal to 1 over theta. And we can use the properties of fractions to add on the left hand side. This gives us that Pb plus 1 divided by Pb is equal to 1 over theta, where theta is our fraction coverage. And now for our final step, we're simply going to take the reciprocal of each side. And so we get our desired result that the fraction coverage theta is equal to Pb divided by Pb plus 1. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.